Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Put your wallet back in your pocket. We're paying with our iPhone. I'm excited about this. We'll also show you a great new camera app I learned about with you on Saturday. And if you want to be as smart as Leo, you got to improve your vocabulary. Uh huh. It's time for iOS Today. iOS Today is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully. So you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Tully, that's it. It's time for iOS today. Yeah. Hi, Megan Maroney. Hi, Leo Laporte. This is the show where we talk about iOS today. Mm -hmm. And when we say iOS, we mean the iPhone. <laughs> here somewhere. The iPad, the I Apple TV, and the Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. All of which got updates yesterday. They did. I haven't updated anything yet because I like to um, live on the, the edge. You know, it's a bummer. Uh, the update on the Apple Watch, I think, is the whole operating system. I know, you know, most of the uh, like app, iPhone and iPad now, they it, the updates are fairly small because they just change the things that need to be changed. But I, but it was this, the Apple Watch is kind of like the old days of the iPhone where they had to <laughs> update the whole operating system. And apparently, unless there's other things they're they're hiding, uh, this is all about a, uh, a, 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 a te is it Telugu? character an indian character mm. that would crash messages that's that's mostly what this fixes at least that's what apple says anyway so that won't happen anymore well there yeah i mean i'm running the beta on the ipad so i'm getting i'm getting some exciting things I, oh i'm getting my iphone back on thursday you currently still in android land yeah um which is tough but you know i i'm a survivor so uh, the six weeks is <laughs> it's been tough for me because I can't text message you. I know that was my own fault um, because you have to sign out of iMessage when you switch to Android, or else if all your friends still think you're you're on the light side and you've moved to the dark side, or other way around, depending on your opinion. Randall uh, from uh, XKCD, what's his last Monroe? Randall Monroe. Uh, his most recent XKCD is a leaked list of the major security vulnerabilities for 2018. What's up? What a pretty font. <laughs> well, he hand writes it. So, number one, Apple products crash when displaying certain Telugu or Bengali letter combinations. And then it goes on, and it's actually pretty funny. An attacker can use a timing attack to exploit a race condition in garbage collection to extract a limited number of bits from the Wikipedia article on Claude Shannon. This is kind of a geek joke. Mm -hmm. At the cafe on 3rd Street, the post-it note with the Wi-Fi password is visible from the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> but but he he's actually really making fun of Apple's uh, messaging. Apple products catch fire when displaying emoji with diacritical remarks. <laughs> Marks. <laughs> uh, the Apple products grant remote access if you send them words that break the I before E rule. Oh. <laughs> Apple products execute any code printed over a photo of a dog with a saddle and a baby riding it. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, if you're a geek, you'll you'll enjoy this. The twenty. I hope that Steve Gibson makes this his uh, image of the week this week on security. Now the twenty, the f future. 2018 security vulnerabilities. Anyway, this first one was fixed, displaying certain uh, a Telugu or Bengali letter combinations. It's that darn Unicode keeps getting in the way. Mm -hmm. That's true. Today we're going to talk about payments, paying with your iPhone or your Apple Watch or your iPad even. All the it's way. really, you know, it's gotten to be very competitive. Apple started with Apple Pay, of course, on the Apple Watch and uh, on the iPhone. And Google has its own version, which today, of all days, they've renamed from Android Pay to Google Pay. Mm. And uh, it's very, they're very similar. The, the Apple Pay and the Google Pay system on the phone work with something called NFC where you you know it's tap to pay the, the the back of the phone has a little chip in it you tap it on the cash register on that receiver there 
and it will go blip, blip. And the Apple Watch does the same thing. In fact, the Apple Watch is kind of convenient because you see, you can see which credit card you're going to use. You have various credit cards enter in and you can pay that way. But that's just the beginning. Turns out there's a lot of money to be made mm -hmm. in payments, right? Because they take a little slice of every transaction. Uh, the model for this is uh, Africa, where they didn't have a banking infrastructure. People didn't have checking accounts in many areas. And so there was a company called M-Pesa that used smartphones. A lot of people had smartphones and became a dominant platform. It became, in effect, the bank in Africa. Mm -hmm. India, same things happening. A lot of the developing world uh, cell phones are used to pay. And so I think Apple would like to see some of that happen in the U.S. We've mentioned before, in fact, back to Sarah Lane days, she taught me about Venmo, mm -hmm. which which is was the kid's first, you know, Big choice. The Say, teenagers loved the, teenagers the Venmo. Teenagers loved the Venmo. And they still do. It's owned by PayPal now. Yep. But um, I, I like it. My sister uses it. Um, so I use it with her, you know, when we buy presents for our parents or something. It's it's pretty easy yeah. to do that. I, I use it with some people here, like when we go out. It's so much better than asking the waitress to like split I think it's, up the it's check. Prim I think it seems to be the primary use of it is because younger people tend to go out together. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> Yeah, the younger kids. The, the young. Sometimes they the young me. do that. And uh, and then you want to split the check or you want to, you know, and this is an easy way to do it. So Can I give you a tip on Venmo that I, I think? Um, change your privacy settings because by default, all of your transactions are revealed. So, like, I can look at everyone. We can just look at you here. You can like, see all the I transactions? I can see that David Prager paid Adam Gould. Not how much, but... Bocci, that's kind of weird. I think that's um, the social aspect. Tracy Needles, probably Jeff Needles' sister. Um, just all this. You can see stuff. all the people who paid These it. Are, and now, look, all look of Natalie you at Nunes home. paid Abby Laporte. Um, so yeah. all my contacts are in here. And that's bizarre. I'm going to have to add Yeah, Venmo. make sure that you <laughs> change that because that is a social engineering nightmare here. So um, just go into settings. That's um, hysterical. And then I have, let's see, where do I have it? Mm, privacy. Uh, set to visible. Visible to senders and recipients only. You don't want it public. You don't want it to friends. I mean, maybe you want it to friends because you only... I don't know. If you enter all your contacts in there as I have, um, so like... I don't even know if Abby is like Abby was in my contacts, That's so all. therefore I'm revealing She's her. Not, like she might, yeah. not, I might not be in her contacts anymore. Isn't that so, weird? Yeah. So change those to private. Do it. Do it now. Yeah, <laughs> boy, that is a really good tip. Yeah. Now, oh yeah, look, I can see them all too. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. That's hysterical. I don't even know who some of these people are. Yeah, that really. That's everybody in your contacts. You know what's fun though is that people. Uh, you know why Venmo does this to show that every everybody's doing every, it. Yeah. Look why at, aren't you look doing at all it? The, it's a sense of FOMO. Like, look at that. Like, look at I my old even, friend David Prager. I haven't even. Fun. I haven't even signed in. And, and I'm getting you? these. You, that's, yeah. There may be not people I know. Maybe oh, that's what it is. Are... Some people have it on public. So anyone can see it. So you're just looking at like Joe Blow and Smith. Yeah, Catherine I don't know these Smith, people. Who... I think people are also very proud of the messages and emojis they put in their payment, right? <laughs> yes. There's some time and thought put into right, that. Right, because you're like, oh, what does that emoji mean? What are you paying that person for? Like apparently this guy paid jared paid sarah you can take a look at for it. a bowl a chicken and some soup maybe it's chicken noodles soup chicken i don't meatballs, i don't, don't want to go too far down that road what is th that's a strange soup emoji it has a cigarette coming out of it <laughs> is uh, it a spoon with a noodle here, coming off nicole of it? paid liesel for girls braids <laughs> uh, caleb paid the penn state army rotc for monster Z Monsters. Yeah. I say, like, if you're trying to investigate Austin. a crime or something, first oh, go to Venmo. Busted Austin. He just paid Max for the Lifetime Original Movies box set. <laughs> Austin <laughs> busted. See, that's another way to use it. If you put it in there to just embarrass your friend. I think, you know what? That's what happened, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I oh, that's so. hysterical. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm not going to sign in. I want to see other people's. This <laughs> is, this is very funny. Seriously. Rochelle just paid Lexi for Wi-Fi and garbage. <laughs> That's a lot of what people use it for. Like the, you know, the yeah, rent. rent and the Roommates. garbage. Robert the... paid Evan for Taco Tuesday pre-sale. 
If you want to know what the kids are doing these days, maybe say you're writing a novel and you don't get out of the house very much, just go into Venmo and say, here's what the kids are this doing. Is, you this is, the you could write a Venmo novel on this. Yes. Like, when Geneva paid Celia for BR Sec Airbnb Cuba Heart, <laughs> it was only the beginning of their relationship. So, yeah, that's my Venmo. You could have tip. a whole relationship in Venmo payment messages. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write that for the New Yorker. Mm -hmm. Venmo, send and receive money. Now, something we should pay, we should point out. All the banks now, all the cool kids are going with this new thing called Zelle. Mm -hmm. Banks don't like it <laughs> that you're using these other services when you should be writing a check for four, three, 43 cents, right? They hate that because they're losing their cut. Yeah. So they've started to partner with a payment service called Zelle. And you might have seen an article in the papers this week about people getting ripped off. Yep. Only use Zelle with your friends. It's not like PayPal where you can, you, there's no fraud protection. Venmo, same way. You can't, Venmo, you don't uh, have fraud protection If either. you send somebody money uh, and, you know, so the scam goes something like this. You're on Craigslist. Somebody wants to sell tickets to the Bruce Springsteen Broadway show. You say, that's fantastic. Hey, they're only $1,000 each. Fantastic. He says, you pay me by Zelle. Zelle goes from your bank let's say Wells Fargo, to my bank, Bank of America, right? So you go, well, he's, he's got a Bank of America account. That sounds legit. So you send him $2,000. The tickets don't arrive. You call him or you email him because you have his, oh, you text him. That's what it is. You have his mm -hmm. phone number. He says, oh, no, no, it takes, sometimes Ticketmaster takes a while. Just be patient. Still no arrival. So you text him. The phone is no longer working. It was a burner phone. So you go to your bank and say, Wells, uh, call Bank of America. That was fraudulent. Bank of America says he no longer has account with us. We're all done. Right. And so they don't stand up for this. You would think, well, he had an account at B of A. He must have, they must know something about him. Nope. So it's a, it's, I think the reason it's ripe for fraud, Venmo, you kind of understand. There's right. no. It's between friends. It's just between people. But Zell, you feel like, well, this is my bank. It's like a check. Yeah. It is not an EFT or an ACH. It is not a check transaction. Well, the other thing about this is you're often initiating the transaction in that situation. Like if you want to buy um, tickets on Craigslist, you're saying like, I'm going to give you the money. So then right. like, then banks really don't, like if, if someone fraud, you know, defrauded you by them asking for the money, they do protect you a little bit. But in this way, that's why it's, it's great for scammers. If you used a credit card, a debit card, yeah. a check, the bank PayPal. would have liability. Even PayPal. Yeah. PayPal had to do this, remember, because... Uh, they people were buying things on eBay using PayPal and getting ripped off. It happened to me, and so they put this. They started putting this buyer protection on mm -hmm. there, and so yeah, people assume that well, I must be somehow somebody's. No, so just be a, be be careful. Now, ever since Venmo, there you know it's all about jealousy at this point. Facebook started doing it. Mm -hmm. Apple started mm -hmm. doing it. Everybody. And Do you use Apple Pay Cash? I've used it with uh, uh, my hairdresser. Mm. So. It's in your Apple Pay. The, now, both of you have to be using iOS 11, right? You have to both be up to date. But you can send money um, when you start writing a message. Send some money to me. Should this I send some money works. to you? Well, I don't think it will work because I'm on an Android phone, but try it. See what happens. This would be, okay, don't show, I don't want to show your phone number. Yeah, don't See, show yeah, don't do that. Number. So I'm going to pick that. Okay. Now you can show it. Now you can show it because your phone number is hidden. <laughs> Um, I have sent you other things you haven't seen. Yeah. So let's, let's, you print, you hit, this is where it gets a little hard because it doesn't show an Apple pay. And I, I'm surprised at Apple on that. It doesn't, I guess I'll <laughs> send, send you me that. another one of those. Uh, it doesn't show the Apple pay. So you have to pick that a thing, mm -hmm. right? Apps. Yeah. To me, that is a yeah. little tricky, but down here in your apps, there's a little Apple pay thing. Megan Maroney cannot receive payments at this time. Mm. Oh, and I was going to send you a thousand dollars. Bad. That's you can really just give too it bad. To me in cash. But if, yeah, should I send it to John? Let me Venmo, send you some. Venmo, Zelle, all the other Let me ways. Send John. John deserves some money. So let's try another one. Now the way this works, and a lot of these work this way, um, you don't get cash in your pocket. <laughs> Where does it go into your Apple Pay account? It goes into your Apple Pay account, which is kind of interesting. Um, a lot of them work that way. They kind of become an escrow. Thing. Like Venmo works similarly. So you can use it, but you can also put the money in your bank 
from so I'm now sending uh how should I, I'll send a dollar. Now the nice thing is Apple at this point doesn't take any money out of it. So mm -hmm. it's a and I'm going to pay John a dollar. That's nice of you. And so it shows up like this. You can add a comment. There John has his phone. For services rendered. You got to you got to do Use you got to emoji. Use that bull emoji apparently means Should I use the bull emoji? <laughs> All right. Let's do an emoji. Bull. See, Apple isn't consistent. I know. Kiss. There we go. Apple's not consistent. There's a cinema kiss. So it's a, it's a dollar. And now it's going to come out of my balance, Apple Pay Cash balance of a dollar. I don't know why. <laughs> dollar. And then it. this is good because on the iPhone 10, you got to do the face recognition. Bing. And now John is going to magically, let's hope. Okay, it went out. <gasps> Not, oh, look. Oh, oh. Just sent you uh, a kiss and a dollar. <laughs> so isn't that cool? So that now that goes, he, to, I don't remember how to get it out <laughs> how to get I, the, of Apple Pay. Yeah. I know with Venmo, they don't make it easy, but you can move it into your bank account. It's, yeah. You, you, you would set up, you're going to want to set up a credit card with it. And then um, I think you can at some point withdraw. Mm -hmm. But the idea is, and the reason they do it this way, all of them do it this way, is because every transaction, they the bank takes a little bit of money. So the idea, and you know when you buy something with iTunes, it gets consolidated as much as they can over a period of a day or two. So sometimes you'll buy music and it won't uh, it won't become... Do you have do you have the dollar, John? Uh, yeah, but I can't show it to you. I mean, it says... Uh, <laughs> I can't show it to you. Yeah, it's got personal information on well, it. Well, it's got another phone number. Uh, it says accept. Okay. Here, yeah, accept it. Here, here, I'll hide that. Yeah, That's okay. Uh, oh, this one. This one's fine. That phone number is is the phone number I never answer. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'm gonna press accept on John's thing, and now he's a dollar richer after he agrees to some <laughs> very long terms and conditions. <laughs> You're going to be so wealthy after you read you would waste a dollar all just reading of these terms and conditions. Wait a minute, that was just paragraph one. Here's paragraph two. <laughs> oh, that's not so bad. Here's paragraph three <laughs> or subsection C. This is the privacy agreement. Do you think anybody ever reads that? We know they don't because you can put silly things in there. Can I agree for you to that? Okay. Oh, now you have to set it up. The nice thing about Apple Pay Cash is these little logos and things that they send. It's pretty. It's pretty. I'll let you set it up. It's worth it. You're going to get a whole dollar. The kids now have switched to a, a product from uh, Square called Cash. The kids don't use Venmo anymore? Uh, maybe the kids still do. But uh, when I asked around, uh, everybody around here said cash.me. Oh. You can do it through the website cash.me. I think people trust Square as part of it. So you set it up again. You have to tie it to a credit card or a mm -hmm. debit card. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, I actually sent you some money, but I'll send you some more money. Okay, good. Please do. Oh, first, I have to pick an amount. Let me send you three bucks. I you. We both got five dollars just because you joined. Yeah. So that's I awesome. can I can reimburse you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's suggested. So by the way, you get a cash tag name. Okay. So your cash tag. Get it? Cash uh, tag. That's my cash. Is dollar tag. sign Megan Maroney. Yeah. I'm dollar sign Leo Laporte. But mm. you may have, you could create whatever name you want. So cash tag to Me Megan Maroney um, for dinner, for rent, for love <laughs> and <Ooh>. money. <laughs> I think it's or, but anyway. Uh, pay, touch ID. We like that. You recently, are you sure? <laughs> Yeah, you recently sent three dollars to her. You want to send her another? That's a good reminder. Isn't that nice? Sometimes you get old and you forget. Well, or I'm you not just double. Remind you. you know, it's actually really what it. Sometimes say the app crashed or your iPad mm -hmm. crashed or whatever. It's nice to know that it. Oh yeah, that already went through. Yeah. So we'll pay you. Okay. It is as it is. There's no glitz. No. And I kind of like this. Okay, so should we see how I get the money? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you're on so your I, cash. I'm assuming that obviously this, this is designed for the iPhone. Would you like to receive push notifications? Oh, say yes to that because you want to know when somebody yeah, sends you money. Yeah, of course. Mind. And I yes. love the Abe Lincoln picture. Yeah. There. So you sent me $3 for being a good person. Okay. 
and it says deposited. So do I just tap that? And then destination, cash. Do I want a refund? Do I want a web receipt? Sure. Yeah, get the web receipt. So that's on the website. So this is through Square. Oh, so and then when I, so now my Square account, because I think I do have a Square. Your Square oh, well, account yeah, has $3. Have if oh, you great. use Square, same as Apple Pay or Facebook or whatever, you use it to pay other things, mm -hmm. you might leave it in there for a little mm -hmm. while. Otherwise, you could withdraw it. I think all of these guys, by the way, this is all free, right? Yeah. All of these guys, they want you to leave it in there mm -hmm. because of something called float. Right. The uh, They can make money. You know, $3 is not a lot of interest, but if they had 100 million people paying three dollars and they leave it in there for even four days the interest in that's significant right. so it's all based on them just holding your money for a little bit they want to hold it for a little bit that's cash.me this is the website um so i think this is the one i you know uh direct deposit hits do you buy big oh that's another thing by the way bitcoin cash works with dollar american dollars are the currency in your neighborhood or Bitcoin. You can buy and sell Bitcoin with it. Now, they warn you. Don't. Bitcoin's very volatile. Do not use invest more money than you can afford to lose. Okay. But I think it's interesting that they've added Bitcoin to this. Well, everybody else seems to be pulling back from Bit mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Um, so uh, Cash.me is very simple. You saw it very clean. Um, the pri you know the privacy issues uh, I w of Venmo kind of bother me. Mm -hmm. I think that I, I did not know about that. Uh, let me let me look in the. Um, so here's the activity, but it's only mine, right? You can invite friends, and each of you get a five dollar credit, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see a lot of. Uh, let's see if there's settings uh, in the Apple settings, because I don't see a lot of privacy uh, settings in here. Let's 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 go down to cash. I don't. I I'm a, okay. So allow cash to access contacts. Bluetooth sharing, so that means I could do it if, if it uses uh, people nearby. So this is really nice. If you're at a bar and you're sharing uh, the bill or a restaurant and you're sharing the bill, you could just say people nearby and it will, via Bluetooth sharing, it'll find you all. Uh, notifications, background app, professional. There's, there's not a lot to this. It's pretty straightforward. I, I, I think cash is winning because it's completely straightforward. You well, know, just clean and simple. I do like it, um, and I prefer it to Venmo. It's going to be tough um, to. Well, that's the problem. Everybody has else. to use the yeah. same kind I've of just thing. Just convinced everyone to use Venmo. Um, PayPal is what a lot of people use. That's very similar. Also owned by the same people who own Venmo. It's on the iPad, um, so I can send money or request money. I sent money to you, Leo. Let's see the activity. So I sent. I don't know why it says Twit because I sent money to you, $3. Um, I bought something from this place that I didn't necessarily trust. It was uh, an, I, wow, an Android phone there. that looked like an iPhone. But <laughs> I was like, well, I can pay with PayPal, and I know that I'm protected if I don't ever get that. That's iPhone. nice. That's nice. Um, you can do your Patreon see through here, um, buy all kinds of things, and, you know, you can see people. So it's... Uh, it only they only charge you if you're using your business through that. So if you want to send people money, I love the idea of not having checks anymore. It's, I don't, this I is really great. Checks. Are I think horrible. a lot of people end up using Apple Pay once every once once it's kind of built in. Everybody's using it mm -hmm. uh, on messages. Uh, I think that that's really simple and easy, and people trust Apple. They don't take a cut. Um, Zell is pushing hard right now, and that's because the banks don't like it that you're bypassing them. When you set up Zell, it'll ask you, which bank are you using? You have to be using one of the banks they support, which is, you know, the big ones. Bank of America's in there. Uh, Wells Fargo's in there. U.S. Bank, TD, Morgan Stanley. Um, but once you do that, then you have to go through the bank app. It's actually, the setup on this is fairly complicated. And what's really interesting is the Zelle app makes it look like a messenger. So the interaction mm -hmm. with the Zelle app is like you're in a messaging thing. I won't show my USAA information here real quickly. And Zelle does have, and I have to praise them for this good taste, uh, David Diggs is their spokesman. He was Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson in oh. Hamilton, as well as Lafayette. Very talented, fun guy. Um, 
<laughs> these you saw. I might have seen these on the Super Bowl. So here you go. Go back. You can go back now. So you see, it's like a, um, it's like an interaction. It comes not from your credit cards or debit cards. It's from bank account to bank account, which maybe makes it a little bit too easy. So it's going to ask for my phone numbers here. I'm going to use this one, and it's going to say which which account do you want to use at the bank. Okay, let's confirm. We got everything. You can also enroll in Zelle via email, but you can use one or the other. You can't use both. So I've now enrolled by phone. You can't request yet. You can send. Uh, and let me see what it's going to ask. Okay, so it's got my daughter's already in there because I asked her to set that up. Oops. Oh, it says she's not, re re she's not registered. Your recipient will get their money two to three days after they enroll. So that's another problem with Zelle. Two to three days. This is this is actually a fairly common thing, which is the incumbent businesses see all these young upstarts taking their business, and they go, oh, no, we better duplicate that. And then they duplicate it in the same way that they've been doing business all along. The same problem that people are solving you still have to wait two to three days for the bank to clear it, and you and you still don't get any protection. And it's like, uh, sorry, banks, but this was a bad idea. Yeah. So I, I have to say, I can't recommend Zell. The problem is really going to be uh, that in any in all of these situations, it has to be somebody who's on that service. So you have to. So if all your friends are using Venmo, I, I signed up for Venmo just for that reason only. It's not my preferred. Uh, I think Cash.me is going to start to take over the Square system. I think that is my favorite. It's that, very that clean. And, it's and very PayPal. simple. It's very fast. And what about security in terms like that? That's something that we got a, an email um, from Victor when we were talking about Apple Pay, and you were saying it's not easier. But one thing people don't really talk about is how much fast, how much more secure it is. Um, it's he says and one private. Thing, yeah. Even 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 you know security and private. Which right. Is important. That they're not going to do what Venmo did. Um, neither the vendor nor Apple see your credit card number since the bank sets up a special ID for your device and its account to use with a temporary token for that just that purchase. Any database break-ins would not reveal your credit card number since it's not in the database and the data they do to retrieve, the, the data they do retrieve would not work with further purchases even if you had the device which you would still have to unlock. This uses a standard that's a, in Europe, EMV, uh, and so uh, it is a secure standard. By the way, uh, one of our chatters is saying it, everybody in Norway is using VIPs. Mm -hmm. Norway has a population of 5 million people. 2.6 million people use VIPs. Wow. So that's what you want. You want everybody in a country <laughs> to, to use it. Uh, another chatter is saying Zelle's only two to three days in the first transaction. It happens faster. Once you've established a relationship with that person, it should happen faster. All right. That makes sense. Uh, still, I feel like this is just the bank's kind of half-hearted attempt to get in on this business. Mm -hmm. They're they're going to be disintermediated. It's going to happen, right? At some point, we won't even, you know, we won't really need banks. We'll have blockchain or some other way of, of storing our wallet, decentralized way of storing our wallet. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe Zelle works for some of you. It sounds like some of the people in the chat room use it and like it. So well, sometimes it's the only like it's built it's uh, built into the Chase app. Jack Red says it's built into the Wells yeah, Fargo many, app. Yeah, many times in your it's, bank, it'll be in your bank app. That's that's the whole pitch for this, right? right? It'll be in your bank app, so you just do it quickly with Zelle. Um, another um, uh, option that's out there if you're if you're going to send money overseas is to use and this is another paypal service so paypal really owns this one i guess i don't have it on my um what's it called it's called zoom x-o-o-m oh. when abby was in mexico i used zoom to send her money and zoom is nice uh because instead of doing uh you know you uh, used to do it what did you do western union transfer mm. uh zoom allows you to send money um around the world it's almost everywhere. And in this case, uh, you can send it to a bank if you want. And Abby could go into a bank, prove, you know, she's her, show them her passport and get the money from the bank. But you could also do that at big grocery stores and convenience stores. So they have a lot of places you could pick it up. Uh, it was, they take a cut. So this is not, 
just as Western Union did. This is not as uh, this is not the same as Venmo or Cash Me. And I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if I could have used Cash Me uh, internationally. I guess I could have. What about Apple Pay? Can you use that? I mean, can I like? Yeah, I guess I could have. The reason we wanted to do this is Abby had lost her bank card, so she didn't have a way to take the money out of, mm -hmm. say, Apple Pay, which didn't exist then. This was a couple of years ago. Uh, so she needed some, I needed to send her cash fast. That's why you send Western Union, right? Where she would actually get money in hand. Mm -hmm. And you, I could use Zoom, X-O-O-M, uh, to send money to a bank where they would give her actual cash. And that, that was a big, there are a number of ways, obviously, to do this. Uh, Zoom worked uh, quite well. There was a delay, a little bit of a delay. Uh, I think it was a 24-hour delay between sending the money and her receiving it. But it worked pretty well. And if you if you have a, this is, uh, you know, increasingly in the developing world without bank accounts being you know kind of common people are putting using their phone as their bank basically so you see that reload phones so that's x o o m the interesting thing about square to square cash is that if you have a square account which we both do. Uh, yes, but I, I had one before. It was con somehow connected to my email address. I'm not sure how, but um, when Marco bought my Christmas present through Square, like a merchant, it was like a friend of ours who has a little shop and it was a Square, I got an email saying how much he had just spent, which wasn't great because... <laughs> I mean, it was. It was uh, I know. hope it was a lot. Well, I, it was like a relief at Christmas that I actually got the gift, and it wasn't for someone else. But. Oh golly! Of course, <laughs> it was for you. Please. Of course, it was for me. But that is a good like point. That, that there's, is a good point. I don't know. I was like, "What? Why did I get this?" And then I kind of knew what it was. But yeah. um, that's I'm one sure of the things I actually it. love about Square. They put a map of where you bought it. Yeah. There's a pin on the map. Right. It's the best kind of receipt from my point of view. So it's one of the reasons I like paying with Square. But I don't know how to, we could have avoided that. Like, I don't know You'd why have to it was have separate connected accounts. to my... It's the same thing as if with a credit card. If yeah, you share it's, a credit card. Yeah, we share a credit card. Yeah. So that was what yeah. the, the yeah. deal was. Yeah, I could so, have looked yeah. at our credit card if, anytime. If you want to buy it. gifts in secret, you probably should do it on your own credit card. Right. But it's as opposed to like, I don't look at the credit card bill at Christmas. That's true. This is m more in your face. Yeah, I was like, what? With the email. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But um, I didn't tell him, so don't tell him. Shh. <laughs> All right. I have to say, in the digital era, it is simultaneously easier and much, much harder to sneak around. And yeah. I don't say that from personal experience, but just from what I hear. No, it is. It's easier to sneak around and it's easier to get caught. It's a I've lot easier that. to get caught. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I actually, I share my location uh, with my wife, so she knows everywhere I go all the time. Mm -hmm. So I can't go to the track anymore. Yeah. I think that, um, I wonder what that means. I don't think, because it's easier to get caught, I don't think that stops people. So no, people I don't think people. it's going to be, yeah. yeah. People are people. Yeah. They miss me at the track though, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you spend, when you spend less time at the track, that means you can spend more money on your next mortgage. Oh. So oh, it's a good thing. Rocket mortgage time. Actually, I wish I spent more time at the track. <laughs> <laughs> we went, we went, so the, the, uh, I'll tell the story after Rocket Lisa Mortgage. probably wishes you spent more time at the no, track, she, too, let's be No, she, we honest. went to the races at the San, at the Sonoma County Fair uh, last summer, and we both said, this is really fun. We had a good time, and we said, we should go to the track more often. I haven't been to the track once in 10 years. Uh, <laughs> but that's because we own a home. So, <laughs> let me tell you about the best way to buy a home, says Keegan Michael Key. The best way to buy a home is with Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage. Quicken Loans is the best lender in the country. They're fantastic. They really are. Number one in customer approval, according to J.D. Power, for eight years running. You don't get that, you know, year after year without really being great for people. But they got even better in my mind because they realized that the, the going out to get a loan, the mortgage experience really wasn't keeping up with the times. It was kind of old-fashioned, frankly. Needed a client-focused technological revolution. So they created what they call Rocket Mortgage. It is a loan you can get entirely online. No longer do you have to go to the bank or a lender and, and you know, fill out an application. But the application is about as easy as it could be. Stuff you already know in your head. And then you don't have to go to the attic to go get the pay stubs or the check statements or go into your files. or You know, I ended up, last time we bought a house four years ago, we had to call the bank a bunch because I didn't have my, you know, bank statements from four years ago. And they wanted all this stuff. They kept coming back for more and more. 
But this is this is so much easier. You 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 can literally do it on your phone at an open house. It just takes a few minutes. Answer the questions. The they they shouldn't even call it a loan application. It's very simple. You just fill out a few simple questions. They have trusted relationships with all the financial institutions. So with your permission, they can get your information, crunch the numbers based on income, assets, and credits, and come back within a few minutes with all the home loan options that are right for you. You choose the term, you choose the down payment, you choose the rate, and you're good to go. That's it. It's so easy that you can literally do the whole thing on your phone while eating waffles. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. That's the special address. Please use that. That way they know you heard it here. Rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. And MLS, consumeraccess.org, number 3030. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Have you ever played the ponies? I never have. It's nor fun. the dogs. Yeah, no, we don't have a dog track around here. That's like a New England thing, I think. Yeah, but we do have uh, we have Bay Meadows. We have two and Golden Gate Fields. We have two race tracks here. I don't know when the season is or anything, but it's just it's fun. You see the horses. It's not high paced adventure. <laughs> There's like twenty minutes in between races that you go down. You put a dollar down on you know old paint bucket and and then and then you know we didn't we it's one of those things where we said oh because i like that we first got there i said we should put money on those three and do a trifecta and we we said nah nah and then we would have won oh, which is a, a trifecta is like a lot of money anyway uh it's just fun it's Did a nice day enjoy out. it gee i hope so <laughs> No, they don't enjoy it? No, they like to. You could tell. Some of them, you know, Lisa was going, like, that's a spirited, look how spirited that horse is. I guess he could be, you know, unhappy. But I think he's having fun. I think they like to run. Mm. I don't, you know who's not enjoying it? <laughs> the, the, the jockeys. jockeys. Mm. That, that is, that's got to be hard. But they, no, they do it because they love it too. I don't know. I just feel like I should be doing more of that. Yeah. Okay. To, I need to go to the track more. Often. Yeah, go to the track more. That's that. You know, we were talking about self care. Like maybe that's your self care ritual: going to the 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 horse track. <laughs> no, that's not a good idea. <laughs> um, okay, so the biggest news, in my opinion, the Apple news this week was that the HomePod's leaving those little white rings on people's tables. It's the biggest news because it happened to me. Did and it really? Yeah, it did. Was um, it so? Were, were you able to get rid of it? I haven't tried. I just um, Apple covered says it with it'll books. go away in a while. But it, do you not use coasters uh, for for my... like if you put hot tea on your table? But... <laughs> uh, here's here is a HomePod coaster that Kevin is showing us From now. I do put I do use coasters, but I don't use. Why the wouldn't coasters. you use it for the? Because uh, um, it's not liquid. Because it's not hot. Yeah, why? Well, I didn't think that it would. Did you think that it would leave a? You thought it would leave a? Mic? No, I okay. But I but I don't put it on a table. I put mine on top of the Sonos. Okay, like let any me sensible find my um, picture that I tweeted out here. Um, so Apple says uh, you could rub it with the oil your manufacturer recommends. Wow, that's yeah, you. That's me. That could be like that. Uh, that could be like Apple's example. Right. I mean, somebody on Twitter suggested I just keep moving it around, and it could be Olympics rings. <laughs> That was a great suggestion. Or, or Audi. Yeah. So what uh, I what I did instead was this. I just put it on With top some of some books. Now, one of the reasons people do put it on a table is because Apple tells you put it on a hard surface, the right. whole pod, because it'll get better sound. I don't know if books are hard enough. I think they probably are. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, but you were suggesting on the screensavers that you order a new pair of leather shoes and they'll usually come with some extra leather My posters. shoes do. So well, all of us order Pat and Quill our sh is quite... shoes to be made, of course. Yeah, so. I have handmade shoes. <laughs> Who does? Everybody has handmade shoes. It's normal. They anyway, right? The people make your shoes. It's not made by a machine, right. are they? Do they have they machines that make shoes now? Maybe they do. They probably do. But <laughs> but most of the time, I think a human so even like sneakers, it's humans putting it together. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yes, you get me. You e see how easily derailed my train of thought is. <laughs> Uh, so back to the dog track. <laughs> oh, wait, the where, horse where track, I mean. <laughs> leather coasters. When they make leather things, as Pad and Quill does, I'm I'm thinking there's leftovers. 
So sometimes the piece of leather you get has blemishes. You have to take mm -hmm. those out. Mm -hmm. And they, and they I think, typically do it with a circle. Mm -hmm. And so it's, so like when I get shoes, I get shoes from a, a main company. They have made to order as well as off the rack. It's not that fancy called Rancourt and Company. It's very good though. I love my shoes. And um, they send you, you get coasters and they say these come from, because there's, it's the leather process. We have lots of leftover and we make little coasters. So you get four or five round coasters with their name on it. And I think Pat and Quill's just smart. They're going, we could charge $20 for mm -hmm. these HomePod coasters and get mentioned on iOS today. Right, exactly. But I think that's, well, now do they, it looks like, no, you know what? They're making it a little fancier because they stitch yeah, it around the edges. they stitch it. They put their logo Mine, on there. Mine aren't stitched. They do have a logo, but they're not stitched. Um. All right. So I, we have a mystery that we need to solve. Okay. There's always a mystery. This is one of our favorite mysterious uh, Apple products is iTunes. So um, <laughs> iTunes is is a mystery wrapped in an enigma. <laughs> Mike set aside a riddle. Mike sent us his mystery, and I believe we can play that YouTube video. Hey Megan and Leo, I had a question about yes. uh, iTunes and the playlist. Um, I'll make a playlist on iTunes. I'll sync my phone, and then that'll go to my phone, of course. But I would find over time. Um, that I noticed a song was missing. I go, where's that song that I put on there? And it had dropped off. So I have to go back to iTunes, add it, re-add it back to the playlist, and then it'll make it on there. And then maybe as I'm listening a couple months down the road again, I'll find out another song that used to be on there has dropped off mysteriously. And I'll have to go back again and take that other song and re-sync it. I've talked to Apple. They don't know what's going on. They act like they've never even heard of this before. So I wonder if you uh, know of any issues like that or any fixes uh, to something like this because it's it's frustrating to find out down the road. It's like, well, I haven't heard that song and then find out somehow it's fallen off the list. So any help would be appreciated. Thanks. Okay, so I followed up with some more details to this mystery. Um, he does not subscribe to Apple Music. His wife and he share an account, but they don't share playlists. So he thinks it's not his wife just deleting songs just to mess with them. Although, would be a good idea. He uses a Mac and he says the app that he uses is a music player called Leech Tunes. So that's how he plays. Because if you don't subscribe to Apple Music, I guess you can't use the music app to play your own music on your iPhone. Of course you iPhone? can. I don't know what Leech Tunes is then. I don't that, know why that's... he uses Leech Tunes. Sounds like he's downloading pirated music. Uh, uh, let me look up Leech Tunes. He doesn't look like a pirater, does he? That's what they call it. Leeching is... Uh... <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud. Um, so... So it could Leech be related tunes. to Leech Tunes. Leech, Leech tunes? tunes enhances the experiences. Add all your favorite music... And buy a Apple Music and enjoy Leech Tunes. I don't. We don't think you're a pirate, or I don't understand like, why you need Leech Tunes. That's a good. That's the first question. It's because it's the best music player on iOS. Um, so, okay, if you really hate the interface, that might be why. It's two dollars. Um, I have a couple of thoughts. I hate to say this, but you might be doing this yourself accidentally. It is really easy to, to remove songs from playlists. All you have to do is select, click on the song, and press the backspace. And without warning, it's gone. So, like, it's just in a pocket, your pocket or something, and you're taking I it think out. on the Mac, if you're, if oh, just by chance, I mean, oh. make sure you're not actually, it is very easy to remove songs from a playlist. It's too easy, probably. But Apple wants to make it so you can, you know, the, Apple doesn't, I think, think of playlists as a permanent thing. They're kind of, something you make as you go and you change a lot. So they want to make it easy to update them, to change them. And so if you're in iTunes and you just press backspace by accident, it'll delete that from the... It doesn't delete the song, obviously, but it'll delete it from the playlist. So that's one. I would make sure that you're not doing that. And maybe this Leech Tunes, I don't... I'm not familiar with it. It looks like it's just a different interface to Apple Music. Um, it ha Yeah. It also has, I notice, a lot of uh, gestures. It may have a gesture to modify playlists. It's interesting. I think what he was saying was that they were dropping off of his phone and then he had yeah. to go sync them again. So I got the feeling he had to add it back to the playlist and then sync it on the on the on the Mac. Uh, if it's not disappear, if it's, by the way, I do think I've heard this complaint once before. 
<laughs> what about a, um, a corrupt iTunes file? A library file? Is that possible? Yeah. Uh, that would have, you see a lot of other issues, though, than just occasionally uh, songs in the, will disappear from the playlist. It could really be a bug in iTunes. Uh, you know, Apple not knowing about it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. There are plenty of bugs in iTunes. But my, my first guess would be you're accidentally hitting backspace. Um, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. That was not one of the the, the mysteries. I, I, Mike, now am I wrong? In, did I misinterpret him? I got the I got the impression, maybe maybe incorrectly, that that was dis disappearing from the playlist both on the phone and on the Mac. And of course, if it disappears on the Mac and you and it's syncing via, here's one thing you could do: turn off Wi-Fi syncing. I don't know how often you sync your phone to your Mac, but this would be a good test anyway. Uh, is to sync your phone up with the playlist exactly as you want them and then make sure you disable any synchronization that doesn't happen unless you're connected via a USB cable, right? And then see if that playlist gets changed automatically without syncing. I think it would only happen via syncing. Of course, the uh, iTunes will sync with your phone both over Wi-Fi and over a cable. So if you have Wi-Fi syncing turned on, turn it off temporarily. Just see if that fixes the problem. If it does then it sounds to me like it's disappearing on the iTunes playlist and then it's getting copied over to the phone. So uh, what if Do it, not sync, in other words. What Do you think it has anything to do, could have anything to do with the rights of the music? I mean, this is his yes, music. that does sometimes happen. But if he's happen. playing it on Leech tunes, maybe they think that, he doesn't have the right that to the does, music. Yeah, the Leech, I wish we could take Leech tunes out of the equation because that's really an unknown. But uh, yes, that does happen from time to time. Um but only if you're using iTunes Match or Apple Music. If it's music that's on your system, there's not no right changes could happen, right? The rights, you you own the music, it's on your system, it should automatically sync. You can even in go into iTunes and disable all synchronization, uh, and, and that will, of course, preserve the playlist. And then turn it on and do it once in a while when you need to do it. I, I feel like this is not... This could very, it could be your fault, but it also could very easily be. I don't mean to imply that you're doing something wrong. It could also very easily be Apple and iTunes. iTunes is so buggy. Um, it's not unusual. I use actually, and you might want to look at it, I use, since you're not using any of the Apple Music features, get iTunes out of the equation entirely. I use a, a, a program, a player called a Vox, V O X. It's a very nice, simple player for iPhone, iOS, uh, but also Mac OS. It's not free. They have their own library called Loop that lets you use a cloud library, but you don't need to. You don't have to pay for that. Uh, use Vox as your player playlist manager. There it is. Uh, one of the reasons I use it, it, was, it plays back high-resolution music, which Apple's iTunes does not. Um, so uh, maybe, maybe it's time to look at a better player. This has a very nice, I think uh, you might not need uh, the Leech music on, uh, on your uh, iPhone because it's got a very nice interface. Uh, anyway, that's what I use. I think iTunes is belongs in the dustbin of history. Mm -hmm. All right. Matthew writes, I was watching this week's iOS today and I thought I should share an article that is of relevance to the features issue you were discussing, which I found from Apple support. So we were talking about how the HomePod answers first or sometimes the Apple Watch answers first. Right. Um, the devices are actually speaking to each other yes. via Bluetooth. You could tell because... One will answer, but only, both will answer, but only one will respond. Mm -hmm. and both, that will, both will wake up. The device that hears best uh, is the one most recently raised or, oh. or that heard it best. So it's... Um, yeah, because that's how echoes work. It's yeah. the one that's closest to you. But it's interesting. If your watch is always responding, that probably means... I mean, if you're moving your hands around a lot, like they think that you're... Does your watch respond when you talk to your HomePod? Instead of your HomePod? No, my HomePod is the only thing that responds. Although uh, everything seems to wake up. Yeah. Actually, the maybe the reason this is bothering people is the handoff between the watch and the phone is pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's because you're holding them. And so it's mm -hmm. that's why it's which one's raised first. But I notice it's not quite as good with the HomePod. But both wake up. And then usually the HomePod responds. What I'm one of the things I'm really impressed with the HomePod is if the music is very loud, it can still hear you. That was that's something that the and none of my echoes could really do. If it, if the music was loud, it couldn't hear me talking to it. Yeah, it's supposed to be able to reject the music and only listen to you. But I found that it doesn't hear me a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. 
I shout a lot at home. I'm so. shouting all the time at the at the Siri, at the Echoes, at the Googles. <laughs> <laughs> I shout all the time. It's sad. But I was not, listening to music this morning, and I'm shouting, "Hey Siri!" But now Siri's on the complete other side of the room from me. She's probably ten, fifteen feet away. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had to shout. Mm -hmm. No, you weren't angry at her or anything. No. We moved our Echo show. So one of the kids moved it, so it was like directly facing the television. And then we were trying to watch television, and it just it kept. Up a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, everything. I don't hear I don't hear uh, the HomePod waking up a lot, but I mm. both my Google and my Echo wake up a lot. Maybe the Google even a little bit more. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. Steve from New Jersey writes: the Do Not Disturb mode in iOS has always befuddled me. Specifically, the allow calls from option. It appears that theoretically. I should be able to still allow calls from a certain specified group. But what I've never been able to figure out is actually how to create Only said group. Only one group. Favorites. Oh, that's it? It makes it sound like you can create more groups. So let's, you want to take a look at what, okay, so do not disturb is here. And I want to allow calls from all, everyone, all contacts or groups. But like, you, this implies that I could create another group. Like he wants to create a group, his kids. Just, I just want, and I want to create a group, but there is no place to create that group. <laughs> really? You can't in contact? No. Uh, not that I could find. Um, you, your suggestion to this was use Google Voice. Well, but it's different. I didn't really understand. Uh, he's talking about having his... Well, I mean, you could... Yes, I do use Google Voice for okay, that. Okay, so you can show this now. Um, there, like, where would you create a group? That is just creating a contact... There's no place to add a group. I guess add field, but that's not a nope, group. No, there's no groups in there. Um, Looks like you have to do it on the Mac. Oh. Or iCloud. Oh, iCloud, yes. That was... Um, Doesn't look like... Why would you have to do it in iCloud? That's dumb. Let me see if you can do it in iOS. Uh, well, how a does few, okay, here's the story. iOS removed the Apple removed the ability from iOS to create contact groups. You have to do it on iCloud or on your Mac. Why? Because <laughs> it's too complicated. So uh, you could go to iCloud and do it, or you could do it on your Mac. Okay. But you can't do it in the phone. And then I guess, and I, we should try it, I would guess that that would now work with Do Not Disturb. I don't want anybody to disturb me. <laughs> so yeah. I don't allow call. I allow calls from no one. But wouldn't it be great if you just could get calls from Abby and Henry? Yeah. Well, that's why I put them in my favorites. Right. But, but maybe I, so I'm I didn't in your even favorites realize too. you could have groups. Maybe I'm in your favorites too. Do you, be, you I don't, don't want, want get a calls call from, from you. Yeah. No. So you could have like calls from people who might be lying in the gutter bleeding and then <laughs> everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and because that's what I always think, don't you, with your kids? Yeah, the yeah. phone rings. That's all. Phone rings. Go, oh my god, they've had an accident. The other, the way I suggested was uh, Google uh, Voice, which you know, which is still a great service, even though they've Google, as usual, is kind of abandoned it a little bit. But you can create a, but you have to use a new phone number. But that's what I do. The reason I don't mind if you see my phone number is that's my Google Voice number, and you have you can have much more sophisticated rules about whether your phone rings. Or not. So what you'll do is you create a Google Voice with a new number and have that number forward to your iPhone or, or your home phone or any other phone. You can have up to five forwarding phones. And then in the settings, you can create groups in your Google Contacts. You can say, if somebody calls from this group, send them straight to voicemail. Uh, I, I use it if somebody send, calls from a number that is blocked, immediately you go straight to voicemail. So I don't it's a re it's actually a very useful way also avoiding spam. So if I don't recognize you, you your phone my phone doesn't ring. Uh, you know some people I can't can't even leave a message. They get a they get a this number's out of service. So uh, I think that's a very nice way to do that. And Google Voice is free, but there are other ways other companies that offer similar services. Some of our sponsors, Grasshopper was a sponsor, right? Uh, I think Ring Central also uh, does that. So. Uh, that that's kind of a feature of these more modern digital uh, answering systems or, or phone systems. But now we know you can create, go to iCloud, go to your iCloud account. Uh, you could do that on your iPad, I think, or iPhone, right? So, and yeah. log into your iCloud account and create the group there. I should, I suppose I should just try it and see. 
I should see if it works. Oh. So, oh, you can't go to iCloud and iOS. It wants you that's to... What, yeah, that's what I don't understand. I got there too. Yeah. And I have iCloud turned on. Um, no, you have to do it from a, a desktop browser, I guess. Oh, Apple. I know. That's... It's, it says, oh, you're on an iPad. We're not going to show you the website. Right. So go to a computer. And so much do it for on the computer. iPad being a laptop replacement. Isn't that funny? There are things you cannot do on iOS that you, ha you have to do on a Mac. Yeah. That'll change. That'll change. I think that ultimately that's what Apple wants is yeah. to everything to be. Uh, but that's, a, you know, they got a lot, a lot of stuff to figure out. Mm -hmm. Guess what time it is? Hat time? So, last week I was green. This week I'm red. We're both wool hats because it is very, it is extraordinary. It's 50 it's cold. degrees outside. Why is it so? <laughs> people, people in Minnesota are going, wait a minute, what? It's 50 degrees? Yeah, it's very cold. That's Freeze not morning. cold. Mm -hmm. But it's cold for us Californians. We have thin blood. We do. My blood is very thin, even though I was born on the East Coast. Why on this day do we wear caps? On this day, during this time, we wear caps as a celebration of an app that we have enjoyed this week. App rhymes with cap, therefore app caps. These are our app caps. These Yay! Are our apps. <laughs> Mine is called Look Up, One Word, uh, by Ragesh Bhargava. I know... Leo, that you have an amazing vocabulary. Thank you. I'm always impressed. I'm I've honored. never, never has there been a time where I asked you a word. For example, what does ubiety mean? I have no idea. <laughs> yes. Ubiety. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It comes from the Latin ubi, which means where. Ooh. So it's it's something to do with. He's closing his eyes. By ubiety the way. would have to do with. Uh, where things are, the state of being somewhere. <gasps> that is so close. He had his eyes closed, as you saw. The state of existing in a specific point in space. Yeah, ubiety. Oh, gosh, if you know Latin. Yeah, we... Um, if you know Latin, it helps. So that's But I've answer. never heard that word used. And I think if you use that word, <laughs> exigent, I know. Exigent is a good word. Yeah. Urgent, needing immediate attention. Um, this is fun. So you're learning words... And it's, by the way, the UI, if you're not watching the video, is yeah. beautiful. That's, Olfactory. This is what... That's a factory where they make old stuff. <laughs> or See, it's an organ of mine that's not working right now because I have a bit yeah, of a cold. Olfactory is brawl cut. Um, so because I've been uh, without my iPhone for six weeks, I have really looked for apps that are great on the iPad. And this is why I like this one because it's just, it's beautiful. Smaragadine. 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 M worlds of or pertaining to oh, M worlds. See, I can't. Yeah. Lisa probably knows that. She's big on. Uh, so the, stones. yeah, the UI is beautiful. Frabjois. Frabjois. That one you. Frabjois. You meant from. Uh, it's from Lewis Carroll. So I could, Frabjuice if I love like Calou words, Calais. I could like them. Um, I could look up other words. Here's what I could look around to search. You want to try this? this look is around. It. So. Um, oh. Let's see. I'll so you click. can like f look for a word. Mm -hmm. Where, why isn't that? Well, but you don't have any words on your phone. No, there's nothing showing Here, let up. Let me make a big word. Okay, here's a word. Do you have to put it in the? Uh, it's not. Oh, oh, in there. Do you have to put it in the? In no, the, uh, it was recognizing objects. So that is in beta still, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but I could. There's dark mode. There's time based, so if you're looking at this, you know, at night it would be dark. There's you can adjust it according to the ambient light. I can search for a word. What's a word that you would like to search for? A uh, sesquipedalian. Oh, sesquipedalian. Sesquipedalian. Oh, did I spell oh, it did wrong? I misspell it wrong? Mm. Yes, I think it's Q U I D. Q U I. Actually, I don't know how to spell sesquipedalian. Well, but it's a good word. Yeah, it is. Huh. Sesquipedalian. What does it a mean? A long word. A person <laughs> who uses long words. That's my favorite word. 
<laughs> it's kind oh. of a that's kind of a recursive word. It's a long word that means a long word. Wow! Did you know that it literally means in Latin a foot and a half long? Yeah. That sesquipedalian yeah. is the best word. Isn't that a great word? Yep, I'm gonna like that word. <laughs> so aside from the look up feature, look look around to search. Uh, I really like this app. Look up. That's nice. So this is an app. I'm really cheating on this one because you and I both know about this app. We mm -hmm. found out about it Saturday uh, when we were doing the new screensavers. We had a great guest of the new screensavers talking about uh, camera phones. He was from DP Review. I've forgotten his name, however. I want to say Rishi, but I can't remember his name. Anyway, uh uh, we should find it because I want to give him credit for this. He told us about an app that blew my mind. In fact, frankly, I was distracted for the rest of the show because I couldn't stop playing with Focus. Now, it's not spelled the traditional way. It's F-O-C. Rishi Sanyal. Rishi. Rishi Sanyal. Sanyal, that's it. Uh, thank you for looking that up. It's spelled F-O-C-O-S. And I put it immediately in my camera folder, which is loaded with all kinds of fun cameras. F-O-C-O-S. Now, what's great about this is you can use it and take a picture now, or you can take an existing picture and play with it. It takes, it's one of the few apps on the uh, iPhone, not, by the way, need the uh, dual camera. Uh, it doesn't have to be an iPhone 10, it can be an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 7, I think. But it's, but I, it's using the spatial information that the dual camera gets. I'm going to use this photo because it's... Um, Invalid depth data. So it has to have the depth data. There you go. So this is the photo as taken. First thing I'm going to change is the aperture. So as if you're a photographer, you know that the aperture is the how wide the opening is. And when the opening is very narrow, it's like a pinhole camera. Everything is in focus. Lisa's in focus. The background's in focus. That's really not a great portrait, generally. You want to use the the depth, what's called depth of field, how, to, to point the viewer in a direction. And you do that by, by opening up, and you can open it up all the way to f1.4, which puts the background out of focus. Whoa. So you get a choice. This is all because the iPhone is recording all this depth information, then I can do that. But that's just the beginning. I can also change the shape. They call this stuff in the background, the blurry stuff in the background, bokeh. It's a Japanese word, B-O-K-E-H. And it's what distinguishes in portraits anyway, a great portrait from a kind of mediocre portrait is, is, a, is a shallow depth of field. But the bokeh also, bokeh also tells you something about the lens. You can choose a different kinds of dots behind you. Now, these are subtler changes that you might, yeah, you can kind of see that one, right? Uh, you can have a, a big dot, you can have a blurry dot, uh, but you also can have an apple dot. You see, there's little apples oh. there. There's an airplane. <laughs> see little airplanes? Right, that's what he was talking about, the onion ring bokeh. Yeah. So uh, that is done, sometimes photographers will do that, shooting through a, uh, a, a uh, cutout. Hmm. But... That's really not the best effect. You, hearts might be fun for your, your wife. She might not notice them right away. Mm. That, but that's not all. We're not done. You can also choose a variety of lenses, including some classic lenses. So this is, for instance, the Carl Zeiss... Oops, let's go back. The Carl Zeiss uh, Otis, which is a very famous, very fast lens. And it will give you Otis-like bokeh. Uh, there's a Minolta Here's an A1. So it's going to change the bokeh. That's because the bouquet, I always say bokeh because I don't want you to think of a bouquet of roses, but it's pronounced bouquet. But bo I'll say bouquet. You know, we, as long as you understand that we're talking about the blurriness in the background. The bouquet uh, is affected by the, the, the leaves in the shutter, the actual physical way of the shutter. So changing the lens changes that. We can also, once when we're in aperture, change highlights. We can change the, 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 this is only the background, not the foreground. We can even change the rotation on the background so the hearts are rotated. Uh, I can go to the magic wand effect, and this is really kind of eye-opening. Because it has the depth information, I'll rotate it so you get a sense of what we're looking at. That's the picture. This is the picture front on. 
This is as we rotate through the picture the different depth information that the camera has. This is how it's able to do that. Did you take this photo originally in portrait mode or not? Uh, no, I don't. Th you do have to? Okay. Yeah, so you have to take it in portrait mode so it'll record that depth information, uh, John is telling us. So once you do this, you can change where the bokeh, bokeh happens, okay, which is kind of interesting too. You're going to want to play with these. Some of these are not going to make a lot of sense to you. But I have to say, the effect is amazing. They also have, um, and he mentioned this, uh, Rishi mentioned this when he talked about us on the show, uh, that you can also do um, a, a really cool effect. Let's see if I can find it. I forgot where it is, though. Uh, a really cool effect that um, you do with, uh, say, a lens baby. What's it called? I forgot. Tilt shift. They have tilt shift in here. I'm trying to remember where the tilt shift is. There's tilt shift in here too. And that the, what tilt shift does, it makes uh, objects uh, appear to be toys. You have to take them from a distance. It wouldn't work with this. But if I took a picture from uh, up, up top of a building, you could use tilt shift to create a very cool effect that it makes it actually look like uh, little toys. This is a very fun app. It's called Focus. Uh, you can play with a lot of other things as well. Uh, but I think mostly what you're going to want to do is play with the bokeh and try different kinds of bokeh till you get the ideal shot. You can see with without the depth information, this isn't a great shot because you can't tell that Lisa's wearing a crown. But with the depth information, it puts the background out and the crown takes uh, takes shape. And you can actually play with this to improve the effect. Really a neat program that gives you... It's interesting for two reasons. One, it's another great effect in your toolkit, but also it gives you a, a lot more information about what Apple's doing uh, in portrait mode, about the depth information. It's just amazing. Is this tilt shift? This is a, was a hipstamatic filter on my screen. Yeah, that, um, it's trying to do tilt shift. It's not, so. a, it's not a very effective tilt yeah. shift. Um, where is it? It's in the uh, all far right. Is that tilt shift? Oh, I can add the effect here. Doy. So let me let me show you that. So um, let's go back to her uh, original picture. And we're going to go to uh, effects. Click the magic wand. We're going to add an effect. And then tilt shift. There's bokeh. Bokeh, but there's also tilt shift and motion blur. Let's hit tilt shift. And now you can say which part is going to yeah. be out of focus which parts in focus it's not going to be as i said great with uh this picture but if you had a picture that was here th this one i think is more tilt shift yeah kind of, yeah what tilt shift does is it puts uh, it, it tricks your mind it puts uh, one of the little toy cars in f clear focus and the rest out of focus that's that aggress is, that effect isn't that visible there because it's not quite as uh, extreme but if you made it more extreme it would um, i might have some pictures that are suitable for tilt shifting it's nice because focus gives you the pictures that you used uh the portrait mode in so you can see i don't actually use portrait mode all that much so you can only you only get to change the pictures yeah i don't have my i use portrait almost entirely on people's faces oddly enough let's see what i can do with you yeah see there's too much of you and too little of the background to really um, make much of a difference here. It's it's a just really uh, worth getting. F O C O S and um, I. What's the? I think is it free with in app purchases? I'm trying to remember. I believe so. I ended up uh, buying it immediately, spending all the money immediately. <laughs> it was just it's just really a cool app. F O C O S. Now again though. You're going to have to have a, an Apple phone that supports portrait mode, which means a dual lens Apple phone, iPhone 7, 8, or 10. Works really nicely with a 10. And we've done it. We've completed another session. Our, our time is up, friends. Sorry, it's like you're the therapist. I'm People like, are going, oh, thank up. God. Oh <laughs> our God. time's up. Your 50 minutes is done. <laughs> um, but the good news is we aren't going to charge you 150 bucks. <laughs> no, no, we're not. And you can come back next week also for free. Um, and you can watch this one again. 
Perfect. We do the show uh, every Tuesday morning around about 9 to 9.30 a.m. Pacific. That's noon Eastern. Uh, it would be 17, 17.30 UTC. We'd love it if you'd uh, come by and watch high, if uh, watch live. And if you do, say hi in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. Uh, you can also watch on demand. Every show we do is available at our website, twit.tv slash iOS for this one. You can subscribe there or just, you know, in your favorite podcast application, do the subscription thing. You'll notice when you go to our website, twit.tv, there's a big button in the front that says, take our survey, please. Last few opportunities to do that. Uh, if you go, to, you can go directly to twit.tv slash survey. Just a few questions. It'll take a few minutes of your time. We're trying to get to know our audience better. We do this once a year because we don't want to gather information about you in any other way. It's completely voluntary. You don't have to answer any of the questions. You can answer just the ones you want to answer. But any information uh, you give us is very helpful. And we promise to keep your information completely private, your email address as well. And we only share this information with third parties in aggregate as a total. And it's things like, it's advertisers sometimes want to know, well, how many women listen to iOS today? Things like that. And that, that way we give them a better idea because otherwise we have no idea. So it helps us. Thank you very much. Twit.tv slash survey, if you would. Don't forget, you can always listen to all of our shows on your voice device. If you're lucky enough to have a HomePod, just say, hey, you know who? Listen to iOS Today podcast. You could do that on your Amazon Echo and your Google Home, your Google Assistant, all of them. I'll let you listen to podcasts. You'll get the most recent episode, and that's great. You can also listen to whatever's going on live by just saying, listen to Twit Live. Uh, I don't know if that works with the HomePod. I haven't tried that yet. Uh, but that's a that's a fun thing. You know, you, you get whatever you get. Mm -hmm. For instance, in moments, you're going to get MacBreak Weekly and then Security uh, Now. Thank you, Megan Maroney. Thank you, Leah Laporte. Email Megan at twit.tv. That way you can send her your questions. Make a video. We love that. Thank mm -hmm. you for doing that. Uh, and we will play it uh, on the air. Just make it short. 30 seconds is best. No more. And uh, just put your first name in the city right up front there. Say, hi, this is Joe from Fremont. Well, don't say that, but whatever your name is. <laughs> say is. And, uh, if you are Joe from Fremont. Unless you're that. Joe from Fremont. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. On iOS Today. <laughs>